So I know a lot about gardening, so much. I've seen so many videos that I am basically an expert. And I will tell you that David the Good, if, if he would just mulch everything, he would have instant success. Instant success. Come on. Eleven thousand three hundred and twenty square feet. That's how much I have under cultivation. If you don't count my son's weedy watermelon patch that's not doing anything right now. This is gonna be tilled up next, which will bring us up to something like 15,000 square feet. Trying to get this through the heads of the no-till people is so hard. Yes, you can mulch, but I would have to be an absolute madman to mulch this entire space. And nobody has ever said that I was a madman, ever in the history of my entire life. Now don't get me wrong, I like mulch. I like how mulch brings in the fungi and the life and slowly feeds the soil over time. These grocery row beds that I'm making are no-till beds. Once they've been put in, I'm mulching on them consistently. The life is building up inside of the soil. It isn't a system where we're going back and tilling over and over again. It's a perennial system. It's got a lot of life in it and the life in the soil is going to continue to grow and diversify over time. But I am not stuck on one particular system. Do you want to grow food? First of all, I want to grow food. I want to feed my family if things get bad. And things have been getting bad. Things are weird right now. Things have been weird in the past. We were gardening during the financial crisis and the Great Recession. Things get a little better, things get a little worse. The whole time we've got food coming in and it makes a big difference. I'm not stuck on one philosophical system where I say the only way you can really have a good garden and have all the life you ever needed is to deep mulch because Elaine Ingham said so. And please watch this two hour lecture. In a matter of about 20 minutes, I can walk down all of these paths and wheel hoe and not have any weeds left. It just decapitates them all. If I were to mulch in here, if I were to mulch all of my gardens, first of all, I've got to deal with the huge amount of materials that I'd have to handle. The dump truck after dump truck after dump truck of chips, which for some of you living in the city, that's easy to get. I live in a rural area and I've signed up for chip drop, etc. and I've had no luck. There is a place where I can get some wood chips. I found out about, it's about 25 minutes away and I would have to get a friend with a truck and a trailer to go down there and pick them up. And then I would probably end up covering about two of these pads. 
Then for the remaining 8,000, 9,000 square feet, I would have to go back again and again and again, and I would have to spread it. And not only that, when you do this, you're making it harder to weed. The weeds can get through that mulch unless I put it in really deep or put down a weed block, like a couple of layers of cardboard underneath it or something like that. I've done that. I've written on it. I've done many small beds that way with lasagna gardening systems. But in a large garden, a wheel hoe and bare dirt cannot be beaten. We're talking a huge amount of effort and materials handling in order to garden according to a particular philosophy of gardening. These plants are quite happy. They have the benefits of no-till in the beds, but I have the benefit of easily maintainable pads in between them because I have a wheel hoe and I have bare dirt. A common argument against tilling or having any bare soil is that by having bare soil, you destroy bacterial and fungal communities. When you till, you commit mass genocide. This is a huge, terrible, evil turning the soil. And yet, without it, we would probably not have any tortilla chips in the store. So if you were to weigh it, chips. Chips win. Everybody knows that chips win. But seriously, Different plants have different relationships with different organisms in the soil. It's well known that root exudates attract fungi in some species and they attract bacteria and other species. And there is a big party going on in the soil where different things are happening and different things are being transported and nutrients are becoming available and humus is being broken down and humus is being created. And there is a big food chain and everything's all working together. I've read the books. I have this huge library of books. I understand this, but not all plants need perfect untilled soil. As a matter of fact, the untilled soil, the, the place that I find that it's the best is in perennial systems. Got a perennial and annual mixed system behind me right here. This area is not getting tilled. But when I'm growing annual vegetables, I've had great results simply by taking some compost, tilling it into the ground, or tilling in a cover crop, or doing both, planting, the vegetables that I want in nice big rows without having to spend days gathering mulch and then pulling the mulch back and planting into it and having to deal with all that, I can go out, I can till an area out and I can have my family fed with hundreds of pounds of food in a couple of months. That's valuable. The plants don't really mind that much that you just killed a whole bunch of bacteria. As a matter of fact, if you remember Bacteria, remember from school? Did you guys go to school? Oh no, all right, that's too much, it's too much. I didn't go to school, so I'm a little sensitive about it. I don't wanna to get too worked up, but the bacteria, right? See those little slides. Bacteria can duplicate every 20 minutes. They keep duplicating. And then you see all these little creepy looking things that look like what are those nasty candies that they sell in the movie theater? They look like those. Good and plenty. That was good and plenty bacteria all over the place. And and so like every 20 minutes. So so you could take a, your 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 tuna fish and mayonnaise sandwich and it's fine when you make it, but by golly, when you pull it out of the back seat of your Oldsmobile Cutlass Supreme 16 hours later and you eat it you'll die. It's a weapon of gut destruction. The bacteria come back. The bacteria come back and they come back and they come back and they come back. So I'm not that worried about tilling and killing off all the bacteria. And as I build these systems, there are areas where I have single row gardens, widely spaced, bare dirt because it's field crops. I need a big yield. I had rows and rows of potatoes that I brought in. I got lots of potatoes, nutrient dense potatoes because I fed them with a lot of micronutrients. And then I have areas like this where I really want to make sure that I maintain those bacterial and fungal communities and keep them all alive. Annuals, perennials, what is your goal? My goal is to grow food first and I will take aspects of every system that is useful or interesting 
and I will build them together to make a working garden that brings me food. More food, less work. That's what I'm shooting for. Yeah, that's cool. That's good. I think there's space for all of us in the garden. Whether you like square foot gardening, deep mulch gardening, whether you till under cover crops, whether you like bio-intensive gardening or great big wide spacing, hey, if you're feeding your family and you're growing food organically or semi-organically or at least not spraying poisons, it's fine. Even if you are doing the traditional, traditional, round up a patch of earth and then till it all up with a tiller on a weekend and plant crops. Hey, well, you're not doing any worse than the grocery store. At least you know which poisons you sprayed. Now, I don't recommend doing that, obviously, and I would never do that, but I'm not going to get hung up in the philosophy of, oh, well, you didn't do this, and oh, well, you, gosh, you, gosh. There's, there's all kinds of different climates, there's all kinds of different methods, and I do appreciate the comments and the input. People have given me some really good ideas, but in the case of a space this big, deep mulching on the paths, it's not gonna happen. Mulching in the beds with tons of sorghum and stuff that I grow to do that with, yes, that will happen. And it does happen because we compost everything. So that in a nutshell is why we're gardening the way that we're gardening. And hey, I don't mind if you know till, just let me have my wheel hoe. Catch y'all next time. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. And if you want to learn more about this grocery row gardening system, check out my new little booklet on the topic where I kind of give you the idea of how I laid it all out and how it works and how we did this here in less than a year. Catch y'all next time. And until then, may your thumbs always be green. I got this 1990s camera for 10 bucks in a pawn shop and I actually got film for it and, and it works. It works better than deep mulching. No, no, I can't say that. I won't say that. It works better than Elaine Ingham. Elaine Ingham probably doesn't have a Polaroid. Everybody's like, Hey, hey, you gotta do it, you gotta do it, you gotta do the thing, you gotta do the thing like this. You gotta be the one that brings in the bagels. You know, this is how you bring in the bagels. And I'm like, look it, I'm already in the line, I've already brought the bagels in. You know, I'm bringing the bagels in literally right now, I'm putting them down on the table. Nobody else is bringing bagels. Everybody wants to say, oh, oh, well, if I brought in bagels, when I bring in bagels. But they don't do it, they're not doing it, nobody's doing it. Just, oh, oh, oh. It's, 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 it's there's like this, this, this ephemeral, this ephemeral could happen of bagels and nobody's getting past the ephemeral could happen of bagels. I, I, I'm doing it. I'm, I'm literally carrying them in. People are, people are just, just on this thing. I don't get it. Why don't you get the bagels? Why don't you get the bagels? I'm getting them. They're on the table. You wouldn't have them if it wasn't for me. There would be no bagels. There would be negative bagels. No, 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 no. I've been bringing in the bagels for decades. Decades. And now I'm like, oh, oh, yeah, Tony. Tony, good job bringing in the bagels. No, no, no. It's, oh, oh, that's not the way you're supposed to bring in the bagels. Well, I never see you bringing in bagels, Steve. Where are the bagels, Steve? Well, I, 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 I have my own idea about how they should come in. Well, bring them in. Bring them in, Steve. <laughs>